Hello guys, welcome to a quick lesson on Laravel. In this lesson, we are going to see how to store array in our database column, that is a column in our table. For example, name is stored as string as a single value. But let's assume you have something you want to store as an array and you don't think you need to create a new table for that. Um, let's say user has settings like preferences for example, if the user wants to receive newsletter notification, if the user wants their, their birthday to show on their profile, you know. So let's just call that preferences, which will be another column in the user's table. But we are going to store all these as one array, one data. Now, there are different ways you can do something like that. You can manually do JSON encode. JSON the code, maybe concatenate string and explode and all that, but we are not going to take that route because Laravel gives us a simple way we can store array, retrieve array, right? All we have to do is to make use of um, attribute casting. So let's call that column. Um, first, let me go to the, to the table. This is the user's table. So here I'll add another column. Let's call that preferences table string we have to define this as string and references i hope i got that correct let's make it nullable by default so it can be empty by default um, preferences okay i'll copy that head over to to user model what i want to do here is to define cast this to array it is as simple as saying array, right? You can also check the Laravel doc for attribute casting to, to understand better how that works. So with this done, we can go ahead and save this, treat this as if it's an array. Let me quickly um, go to go to route. Yeah, um, this is database here before we get to the route. Here we are going to insert some users some users in the user table using the default seeder that comes with Laravel. So this is going to insert 10 users in the in the users table when we run the seeder. All right, with that in mind, I will head over here to the route. What I want to do is actually let me delete this. We are not going to make use of it. I'm going to make an endpoint. Let's say put um, users and then function so we are expecting that the request will come with these preferences the settings right user preferences so let's take request here request um, let me just return any user from the database now user to be user first just pick any user, first user or the, from the database. I'll go ahead to return the user. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is right now we don't have any user. So if I go ahead to call that endpoint, I've already defined endpoint for this. So this is the settings we are going to have. Receive newsletters. Um, hide marital status, whatever, um, favorite color. Of course, this can come with other things like name, name, John, Doe. I mean, you get the point. This is just a JSON payload. And we are making a patch request. I hope that's what I defined. Okay. Uh, what I meant to call this patch to update a record partially, sort of. If I go ahead to send this request, um, we don't have our server running. So I'll go to the terminal. I'll say uh, PHP artisan serve to start the server. The server is up and running. Send this one more time. There is no user, there's no data basically. 
Let's go back to the terminal and insert some data in the user's table. Remember when we talked about the database seeder, the default um, seeder we have here. So let's go ahead and make use of it. I will go to another tab this in the same project. So we just have to say PHP artisan DB. First, we need to run the migration. So PHP artisan migrate to generate the tables in our database. And then let me clear that PHP artisan DB seed. This will insert 10 users in the database. So I'll go back to Postman and send the request one more time. You can see now we have a user. Of course, preferences is not by default according to our table schema. Now, what we want to do is to just see different ways we can make use of the attribute custom we define in the user model. How we can do this is um, preferences to be user preferences just in case the user already has some preferences that exist so we can add to it or override update instead of um, creating something new entirely then the next thing is uh, let's add some items to the preferences let me get to postman copy one of the fields here just paste it we are still going to make use of the request but for now just a quick demo finally we reassign all those preferences to the user to be equal to preferences so first we grab whatever existing preferences we update or set new record we assign the preferences to user and finally we have to um, save it save that now go back to postman let's see if this field will be saved send the request so you can see the field we manually added of course um, we can send a request like this and update both the preferences and other fields what we can do is let me i will comment this out and this as well so for preferences i will just um, say request preferences of course this we just like override everything and set what is sent from the request but that's not a problem you get the point and for the name we can say um, to be request name and once again we save so this time we expect that we are going to have these three fields and the settings we sent via the request so go ahead and send the request I will go up a little bit so you can see that we have those three those three fields right in the response of course um, just to be sure that it is not what we attached here that we are also getting back I will define another route let me copy this to save us some time this is going to be a get request to get a user by id so i'll change this to id come on id so we find user by id instead of user first this time say um find user by id we just return that user so over to postman i will go to the get request here api user id one send the request so this is the same user that we updated here you can see that the preferences were saved in the user database of course we can pick a specific field from there let me say let me return an array here let's assume we want to get the user's uh, preference for receiving newsletter so all we have to do is say user preferences we pass the key of course make sure that the key 
exist to avoid exception so we pass the key just like that i'll go ahead and send this you can see the option for receiving newsletter before we wrap things up uh, it will make sense if i show you how laravel serializes and stores these things in the database so if i open the database this is the user we were working with you can see that this is stored at json right so this is how laravel stores that specific that um, data cast to array this gives us a very simple and convenient way we can store array and retrieve array without having to do json encoding json decoding concatenation etc right okay guys so this is what i wanted to show you i hope it makes sense until next time happy coding Thank you.